We met beautiful people who will inspire you with their wisdom from the heart, sparkling insights and pure awareness. Unique voices from all over the globe talking about hearts leadership. Well, welcome, Antonio. Mm. We're very much uh, delighted that we have Antonio Massaro here. Antonio is in the Netherlands at the moment, and we're very lucky to have an interview with him. Um, he's a well-known spiritual teacher already from early age on, and he was born actually in the Netherlands, which is quite a nice detail. <laughs> <laughs> but you moved to the United States, where you now live in Sedona. And as I recall, what I saw in your mission statement is that you really want to have an enlightened civilization for 100% in the year 2035. <laughs> that's your main goal, is it? Well, I, f I feel that that's humanity's desire. Yeah. You know, like yeah. you can kind of feel that in the collective. Yeah. Um, I just think that, yeah, part, part of what my work does is help facilitate that. And so mm -hmm. I feel inspired to line up with that vision. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't feel like it's my vision, it feels like it's humanity's vision. I'm just sort of channeling it and giving voice to it. Yeah, yeah. We're talking leadership today and there's many cool. leaders out there in the world who have a major impact on society, on, on earth, on people, on anything. Like you're also a leader to that perspective. Mm. What would be your perspective on leadership of today and tomorrow moving mm. forwards? I think the definition of leadership should be that uh, the requirement rather, the requirement for leadership should be that the best interest of whatever it is you're leading is mm -hmm. uh, primary. So in my work what's really important and what I teach people, especially the more advanced students if you want to call them that, is to empty oneself out from a personal self, from personal interests. That doesn't mean that you no longer fulfill yourself, that you no longer take care of yourself, but it means that your motivations and your intentions are um, directly streamlined to be of benefit to the collective that you're of service to. So I think that's the most crucial element of any leader is that they are actually in alignment with the collective that they're mm -hmm. serving, that they're empty enough of a personal ego to be able to notice, witness, uh, channel and translate what is needed in that particular collective that they are leading. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, there's tons of qualities that would be helpful, like confidence and the ability to sense into probabilities, to sort of foresee what's, what's about to happen and where course correction needs to happen. Mm -hmm. um, communicative skills, intuition, you know, there's lots of skills, but the requirement would be to, to become the collective that you're trying to serve to identify with all okay. rather than with self. A lot of people are also talking at the moment about um, uh, leadership is not the way moving forward. Mm -hmm. We, we mm -hmm. should more have a guidance or mm -hmm. is it just vocabulary or do you sense there's also different quality in it? Like you're mentioning like the emptiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know there's this popular idea of, you know, because we're sort of rebelling against the past of like, governments controlling and, mm -hmm. and leaders abusing their position. And, mm -hmm. But I, th I think it's inevitable to have leadership. And I think the fastest way for any collective or sub-collective or group of people or mm -hmm. project, for anything to grow um, relatively quickly and efficiently, leadership is necessary. It's just that we need to purify the way that we think of leadership. Mm -hmm. The leaders that we choose need to be actually pure of heart. Um, mm -hmm. As long as you have a leader that is skillful, that has those leadership qualities, and they have the emptiness of self, they actually identify with the whole instead of the person that they mm -hmm. think they are. I think leadership is still the most efficient model to move a group of people in a beneficial direction. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's been distorted. So this whole rebellious sort of an understandable new subculture of, yeah, we don't need teachers, we don't need mm -hmm. gurus, we don't need leaders, you know, let's just, let's just all be equal, um, comes from having felt unequal to begin with. Mm. Like, uh, sometimes, you know, because of the leadership position that I have in certain ways, like with my companies and 
the teachings that I share with people. Mm -hmm. Here's people that have this attachment to inequality versus equality that will get triggered simply by me being on stage yeah. Yeah. sharing something yeah. with people, right? So that is enough for them to be triggered about, you know, who do you think you are? You're not my teacher, you're not a leader, we're all equal. So, but for my, as, as the leader position, like in my heart there is no sense of inequality, it doesn't even exist. And since it doesn't exist, um, it's not a problem. And we're just doing whatever seems to be the most efficient way, which seems to me to be for me to translate these concepts and distill them and make them easy to understand for the audience. It's just an efficient model. It's got nothing to do with inequality or equality. But we're so, um, we're so sort of traumatized, you know, from mm. the past and the abuse of leadership. <clears throat> that's, that's an understandable approach. But it's not going to be the most efficient approach is it's just going to be a bunch of like rebels, like not mm -hmm. sure what to do. Mm -hmm. the leadership has always been, has always been part of any civilization, any collective. Anywhere. Anywhere, really. And it's, it's a natural model. And if it's in harmony and if it's pure, it works very well. So it's just about healing that. It's not, or, or balancing that. It's not so much about no longer doing it that way. Mm -hmm. Well, you, le you just said, re just a few minutes ago, you said like, quality does not even exist for me. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Because I've mm. been so lucky to be in, in this retreat in mm. the Netherlands with you. So I do understand a little bit where you're coming from, but yeah. the people who watch this video and it might have never known of you, yeah. can you explain a little bit about concepts and what could be of help for leaders, how they could mm. start getting into this process in this, yeah. in this world? So yeah, there's, there's such a difference between, like Jocelyn was saying at the retreat, between inflation you know, or ego and like overpowering mm -hmm. versus the power of leadership. Um, so f for me, in my world, in my worldview, in my experience of life, there is no inequality. There is, um, and I've, I don't know if this is applicable to the other leaders or to your audience, but you know, from the spiritual point of view, um, one can dissolve the ego. One can see that there is no separation between my body and the wall behind us. There's no separation between me and you. And for many people, that's just a concept. But when you dive deep enough into that investigation and it becomes direct experience, then there's not a single bone in your body that would want to deprive you of anything in order for me to get something that I want. That it all becomes as one unified field mm -hmm. of, of benefit. So now the only desires that come up through this particular body-mind expression are desires that are of a nature that identify with, the, with all rather than with this body-mind because I'm no longer identified with this body-mind. So I'm naturally of service to humanity in everything I do and desire. There is very little to no personal desire left, in fact. My, my calling and my service to others is my only desire. It's my only driving engine in life. Now, this is still kind of rare in our society, so uh, it might not apply in the same way to everyone or every leader in every niche, you know, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of personal, there's a lot of personal need and want and distortion. So the same may not apply for everyone, but from my personal experience, there is no inequality. It can never ever exist. It's all God. It's all source. It's all life. And so if then people come to me and they see me on stage and it seems like I'm preaching like a, like a leader or thinking that I'm, mm -hmm. you know, the boss or whatever that is that they think I am, they come from a, a, a modality of thought that is very much based in their own separation. It just, it just shows where they believe that they're separate because they believe that they could be harmed. They believe that they could be stolen from. So as soon as there's an authority figure that's sitting on a stage, they will feel that intimidation, they will feel that disempowerment, even if the leader has no such feelings or intentions. But then again, there are leaders that do have those feelings and intentions. So it's, it's understandable, you know, and, and skepticism has its place, but once you trust someone, once you know where they come from, it, it no longer serves to be skeptical, no longer serves to keep believing in, you know, I want to be equal to you. It, it's just detrimental. It's yep. not efficient. Yeah. You either flow as a whole 
or you fragment and separate each other and then no real progress or advancement is made to begin with. A really solid soccer team needs to, you know, they have clear guidance, they have clear leadership, they have a coach, and, and all the parts have to work together as one team. They have to lose their ego in the game in order to be successful. So it's the same thing, you know, if you have a game with, with, uh, with 11 egos running around the field and no coach and no guidance, it's not going to be very efficient. No. So you could call that equality all you want, but it's not going to be a very fun game to play. Yeah, it's not going to be definitely. very efficient. Similar. Now, there's also this whole story about, you know, lots of leaders at the moment, specifically in the Western society, <coughs> in Western business, are more mind-driven or brain-driven or whatever you want to call it, more rational, mental. Right. And now we are in this flow of <clears throat> getting closer to the heart, a softer approach. Um, right. Is that something you can also share some thoughts of you about? Yeah, I think I think as as humanity we have been exploring those mind-based themes for so long that we're getting to a point of exhaustion. We're literally exhausting those mind-based way of interacting with each other and and it's just rampant throughout the world. You know, I see this manifest world as a reflection of our state of being. Our collective state of being has created the experiences that we see around the world. So it's so obvious that we have been coming from a misaligned point of view in a lot of our structures and our governmental structures and our organizations and you know the, the top companies in the world. And Misaligned um, with? With what? Misaligned with truth, misaligned with love, misaligned with the things that actually work, the way that the universe works. So misaligned in general, really, just like separating ourselves out and misaligning ourselves from the whole. Um, and so since we now recognize that there is no other option for us, you know, if we wish to survive, let alone thrive, we need to get over our egos. We really need to get over our sense of inequality. We really need to get over our sense of insecurity. We really, really need to step into our uniqueness, but without without any bad will towards anyone else. Just be powerful, bright, radiating lights of our own unique theme, our own unique expression, without the sense of needing others to see us in order to feel powerful, or needing others to submit to us in order to feel powerful. Mm -hmm. Just feeling powerful because you are powerful. Just feeling powerful because you're, you are God in mm -hmm. form. So if everyone lights up in that way, then everything just starts synchronistically flowing and, and the pieces of the puzzle suddenly fit and then everything is possible with a species of our size and a species of our capacity if we only harmonized each other and we no longer derived our sense of well-being from the sense of separation and needing to be better than others or needing to be equal or needing to compensate for feeling like lack is a real existential phenomena. If we can just tap into that natural sense of freedom, empowerment, and abundance, and love, and if everyone would do that, it'd be a pretty cool planet to live on. That would. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, um, I, can, I can sense where you're coming from, I can sense where the, the creativity or the co-creation will lead to. I'm thinking of all the people who work in our economic structure in, in Western society, dependent on shareholders or stock value or whatever is out there, yeah. all these wonderful concepts we've all developed and we're all saying, you know, there has to be a different something, we have to get out of it. Mm -hmm. But it's so bloody hard, I guess, for all of them to really get there and to mm -hmm. really have the courage maybe, I don't know if it's courage, yeah, like it what, courage. what would it be to stand oh, up it's, and... It's totally courage, yeah. Is it courage? I think so. Okay. Yeah. But courage comes from seeing that option A will only lead to detriment when option B will only lead to benefit. If once we see that we just can't go on in that way, it suddenly doesn't require courage, it's common sense. So the only reason we need courage is if we can't see why there's more benefit in another way, right? So a lot of these people that you describe in, in business and the stock market and economics, they are attached to the way things are because of their own um, personal attachments and their own sense of insecurity, their own sense of, of not being free. Their, their freedom and well-being is so tied into their circumstances that they're no longer creators, they're slaves to their own systems, 
they're consumers instead of creators. Um, and it's very scary for such a, uh, an ego effect, such a, a, a mind that's based on circumstance to change the circumstances because uncertainty is one of our scariest mm. um, concepts. We have a very negative relationship to uncertainty. Yet when we look at the happiest moments in our lives, there was absolutely zero certainty. It was just in the moment. It was pure mm. joy, pure bliss, mm. pure source. And yet we're always provided from that state. We're always sourceful from that state. Everything is possible from that state. But we think we like security and certainty and stability. Um, when the true stability is in the heart, it's in knowing right. oneself to be the creator. Uh, what was your question? Yeah, about, I don't know anymore, but it's wonderful oh, yeah, what the, you're the just saying. Sense, uh, no, I was, yeah. I was thinking when you said that also like, you know, really becoming into the heart. Mm. Um, we had today we had a wonderful theme on feminine, masculine, wonderful uni unity, right. oneness. Um, and I think everyone in, one in the room, and we're talking here about 500 people or so, were absolutely unified on what was required. Yeah. And for me, that is also was also a touching moment of what is out there in the world, what is the need at the moment. And something yeah. I felt personally, of course, as being a woman in business life, yeah. always in the surrounding, in, in between men, and mm -hmm. different way of mm -hmm. handling business. Um, could you elaborate a little bit more on the feminine, masculine, though we're talking here polarity and we would like both to talk more on oneness. Well, yeah. but how could we get there then as leaders to... So this might rub some people the wrong way, but from all the observations that I've made of our collective and everything that is out of balance and what's required to get back into balance, like I shared at the retreat, um, we, we, have to, we have to stop deriving our power from the outside, from the external, whether we're masculine or feminine. And in particularly, I think the female, um, the, the feminine energy has such a capacity to transform the world right now. If only it stops reacting to the past suppression by men, S meaning, you know, like overcompensating. And I'm sure you find this in, in business all the time and maybe you've even experienced it yourself where there is out of insecurity, out of subconscious ideas of I'm not equal or I'm not good enough in order to try to feel powerful as a woman. A lot of women these days will try to compensate for that or, or even if their natural state or their natural sense of, of being who they are looks a certain way, uh, as long as that is too stereotypical, they'll want to move away from that because they believe that means they're unworthy. So, so we've gotten out of touch with our natural powers, our natural gifts, and we're trying from a very mental place to prove our worth to each other, right? And like I was sharing, especially because there's been like millennia of dominance by the male energy, now, you know, we're all waking up enough to realize that um, that, that has to change and it has been changing and it continues to change. And I think a lot of conscious men at this moment like I was sharing at the retreat as well, are really willing and open right now to find that greater balance. They are willing to find that balance with the feminine. Um, but a repercussion of the past suppression is that now women are like standing up for themselves and trying to accumulate and trying to prove their worth and making sure they maintain their independence and separateness and I don't need men and you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, or like I'm gonna make it in business. And so that it's very unhealthy for a, for a female composition, for a female body energy system. And there's exceptions, you know, but mm -hmm. generalizing here. But it's very unhealthy to get out of your natural mode of, of being feminine, of having that grace and that joy and that power and that love and that service and that holding space and that creating, that creativity, mm -hmm. communication, those skills that are so innate and natural and healthy to the female composition. If that tries to act like a man because the mind thinks that otherwise it's unworthy or otherwise all they'll be doing is doing the dishes and they'll be unequal, right? <laughs> that rebellion, although understandable, is A, unhealthy for the females who, who play that out and it won't allow the now 
more open, more conscious masculine uh, to be met in their desire to share that balance. So that healing needs to really happen. Um, How can we help them with it? Mm. How can we support them? How can we give them mm. a kind of a hint in this few minutes of interview? Yeah, it's a, it's a little tricky, right? Because it really depends on what social circumstance you are in. Because mm. there are certain circumstances where it makes sense for you to maintain your independence and, and be really clear about your boundaries and that kind of stuff. But there's also social demographics. Um, let's say, for example, this retreat, you know, where there's a lot of uh, awakened, conscious, loving, well-intended people that want to co-create a beautiful world together. Mm -hmm. In that type of environment, I would say what I just shared, which mm -hmm. is women of this world, please forgive the imbalance that has been the case for so long and just embrace your gifts as they are. Don't try to be anything other than mm -hmm. what comes completely natural to you. Mm -hmm. Even if that does look like doing the dishes mm -hmm. or taking care of the children at home. Mm -hmm. You know, don't try to, um, don't try to look a certain way to gain power from the outside. Just really trust in your innate creativity and skills because this is what will balance humanity. This is what this masculine dominated society needs. It needs a powerful, graceful feminine that is respected by the male population. So it really depends on the demographic. It's hard for me to, to give a guidebook. You wouldn't that. advise this in, kind of atmosphere in, in a business? I, would I it would be wonderful? If, it would be wonderful. If, if, if the particular females that may be listening to this interview are capable of holding their own space, their own energy, and not digressing to separation or trying to prove their worth, if they can actually maintain this pure feminine confidence mm. and, and not trying to be better than men or be equal to men or anything along those lines, just forget about all those games. Just show up as you are in the purity and the power and the grace of as God created you. Just be true to your composition. That would have a powerful effect on mm. the atmosphere in the job, but Absolutely. this would require people to kind of know my work for example like yeah. be able to embody that yeah. you know and it's just too many people that don't have the understanding or the awareness that it takes to gracefully hold such frequencies so it really depends on what audience yeah. I'm speaking to as to what if you're talking like. men can you you know you're mm -hmm. a man yourself you're a male yeah. leader is there something you could bring to them like that could help them for the next step maybe in these circumstances it's yeah not maybe I, all the way but the first step is mm -hmm. one step Continue to soften, continue to embrace, continue to flow, continue to be confident in our penetrative capacities, our leadership capacities, um, but cultivate a deep sense of, of love and harmony and compassion with, with all around us, um, including obviously the, the women of this world. Mm -hmm. Again, it's, it's difficult to give general advice because I'm yeah. not sure what audience I'm, I'm addressing. Yeah. Um, in general, I would say for, it doesn't really matter whether you're female or male, as long as we find that sense of empowerment from within and we start to expose to ourselves those unconscious ideas in lack, like a lack of worthiness, lack of uh, power, lack of freedom, lack of well-being, lack of beauty, like all those lack beliefs, when we start bringing them to the service, identifying them clearly, and then seeing that these beliefs no longer work for us, yeah. they're real. We start to transform them, we start to transcend them, and we get in touch with this much deeper sense of consciousness, of who we are, of what we're capable of. That power is natural power, that's connected to source, that comes straight from within, and that's endless. We can always source what we wish to generate, once we know that we can always source what we desire to generate, we no longer need to prove ourselves or feel like we have to deprive the world or show the world. We're just natural radiators all the time. We're just naturally generating empowerment and love and freedom. And when I feel empowered, I don't feel any need to steal from you in any way or manipulate. So for male and female, the same applies. Just find that deep sense of self-love, mm. connectedness to source and find your unique sense of empowerment. And if you can tap into that and stay true to that, um, it will take care of everything. And if you tap into that, and if I listen to you well, 
um, you could find also the source of creativity to get out of the system mm -hmm. and oh, yeah. let something blossom or arise that's Absolutely. beyond our imagination maybe at the moment, how yeah. we could make this new world, a new society, new business, new whatever. Yeah. Though creativity is always something that is in business is usually attached to a few people, like, you know, you're creative, no, I'm not creative, you know, I'm on an, an administrative role, you mm -hmm. are in communication, that will be fine. It's sometimes also more feminine than, than male um, qualities, what, sure. I, what I sense. Uh, though I think the creativity is what we need definitely. And you mentioned also in the retreat, in the beginning you said, you know, keep on dreaming, just dreaming. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, you know, could that be a solution for many people that they should believe their dreams and maybe start from there as a first tool to start developing this whole world of creativity and, yeah, make a new world and a new yeah. kind of business without fear. Yeah, well said. Um, yeah, absolutely. But dreaming is something, I don't know, you know, you're Dutch, so you could probably sense something about it, but it's also in Western society, you know. Dreamers are, you know, it's not in business, you do it anywhere. If you're an artist, it's fine, but not in business. In business, we calculate, yeah. in business, we do different things. Well, we make to, mission statements. Right, then you have to ask yourself, is that the type of business and is that the type of world you want to live in forever, you know? Is that the type of environment and structure you wish to create for yourself and others? Or would you like to create something that's not based on lack of finances? Because really, most of business is oriented around getting money, accumulating money, maintaining mm -hmm. money, which is all based on really being insecure about who you are. It comes down to that. The mm -hmm. most, you know, um, prolific business leaders, although they have a lot of qualities and experience and, and they've mastered certain things about the human psyche, fundamentally, m many of them, their whole endeavor is based on insecurity. Doesn't make it wrong. It just, mm -hmm. it's just an observation. So if you generate an entire life, an entire business, you know, you're working 60 hours a week or more uh, on generating this company, there's beauty and creativity in that. But if it goes, if, if it's uninvestigated at its root, then that insecurity will always be the creator of a company. And so the results that you're stuck with at the end, you're never stuck with it, but the mm -hmm. results that you generate will be a reflection of your insecurity. And is that a world you want to live in? And you're all doing it to try to get to a point of confidence. You're all trying to prove to yourselves that you're worthy and capable and connected to source and creative and, and amazing and powerful. What if we just tap into that now before we start a business? What if we tap into that harmonious sense of power? Like it's real raw power. It's incredible to be, to understand that you're at the source of every experience. There's nothing that determines how you should feel, how you should act. You're always creating how you feel, how you think, how you see, what you generate. Once you are in this generative state, and I say once, but it takes practice, it takes training, it takes mm -hmm. consistently, consistency. But once you're capable of living stably in the moment and source from your joy, source from what your calling is, then everything you create will, will instantly be a beautiful reflection of the world you wish to live in, rather than be this sort of excuse for for not feeling powerful already. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that would be wonderful. Yeah. So we need a little bit of courage. Mm -hmm. We do, yes. And then yeah. we need the determination to really make it happen. Yeah, and ideally the, the clarity too, which, which will help with the courage mm. and the determination, which is where my work comes in, I guess. You know? yeah. That's why wonderful. I do what I do, is so that there's yeah. more clarity and consciousness around these patterns that have been running us for so long. It can be changed within yeah. 10 years, you know. You know, it's, it was very um, impressive, uh, enlightening also for me almost, like uh, getting to the calling, like what is the calling for a human being, for a specific human being? Can you find it and you express it as a leader? You want, you had a wonderful sentence, but in this sense, if I understood it correctly, you really want to be of service to humanity. Um, and it would be wonderful, I think, if, if CEOs, whatever they are around, or, or managers of, of businesses, would get to the point that they really understand their deepest calling. And yes. they really take it serious yes. also, because now that would be they powerful. probably would be somewhere there, down there. Yes. But if they could get to the calling, I yeah. think that would make a huge difference Absolutely. for driving their own Absolutely. motivation. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, so. Your, your calling is just this, this deepest, this highest sense of who you are at a core level. So, you know, to use some spiritual terms like your core frequency, or you could say who you are as a soul imprint coming into this world, the intention with which you come into this world. That is your blueprint, that's your theme, that's your calling. And so a calling always has something to do with including everything and everyone. It's, it, it is an act of service. But when we look at the happiest moments in our lives, usually most of them involve other people lighting up in a certain way, right? So one question to ask to discover your calling is, if people experience this experience, or what experience, such and such experience, when are you the most excited when you see that? When are you moved when you see others experience what? And then generate a life and a business inside of that calling. So let's say your calling is um, people experiencing ecstatic freedom. Then you would want to build a business and a company structure that fits inside of that calling. So now you're always generating your calling. So the business is an, an expression of your calling. You're not trying to find fulfillment inside of the business, which is mental. The business is a mind and the calling is heart. You want to fit your mind into your heart. You don't want to fit your heart into your mind. Because there's not enough room. Just switch it around. Switch but we've got to learn to live non-linearly, like from the now, with much less fear for the future and our, our insecurity about where we'll end up and if we'll be taken care of. And all that will be found, like there's infinite confidence available when we connect to that deeper aspect of ourselves. We just feel lit up, we don't care about anything. And we're creating and creating and things line up, the universe responds positively, events synchronistically occur and we just feel more and more abundant, more and more confident without anything to prove it with, without any need for a company. And if we do create a company, at any point we feel free to give it up or change it around because we are the masters. You know, yeah. We're not owned by our creations. We are the creator of our creations. Yeah. So we're never owned by our circumstances. We're talking today about heart leadership specifically. Heart leadership? Hearts lead hearts, mm. The hearts of people, hearts yeah. leadership. Um, um, can you, you know, we know, we all know we have a biological heart that pumps mm. our blood around and does a lot of wonderful things. Right. Can you help us out a little bit on how you look at the heart? Mm. Because we are, we are the creation of a human body. Mm -hmm. We have this wonderful heart and we have yeah. this wonderful heart energy. Mm -hmm. Like, what's your view on that? What's, what's the heart doing for us? What, how can it help us? Well, in a lot of ancient metaphysical systems, you will find that the heart is the bridge between the personal world and the higher world or the higher consciousness or, or the, you could say, God or spirit. Mm -hmm. So the heart is like the jumping off platform. It's like, if the heart's not open, if the heart's not activated, your entire life is going to be about um, making sure you make ends meet, uh, security, safety, safe, um, like personal validation, acknowledgement, that kind of stuff. So if the heart's not open, there's no sense of bravery and fearlessness and courage and power and freedom. It's all based on circumstances. It's all based on proving yourself, right? Which is basically lying to yourself. It's not, it's not discovering who you are and what you're capable of. So the heart could be seen like, kind of like an energy center or like a portal, but really the true heart, as I call about the, as I talk about the heart, is it has no location. It is simply, it's simply the state of being ourselves. You know, it's it's that which is in everything. It's that connectedness to everything. Um, if we find that space within ourselves, if we find that connection within ourselves, then you could say the heart is open. And literally, if you could see energy or detect energy, you would see that somewhere around this area, the energy starts opening and increasing and communicating with a much wider radius and with a much more potent um, frequency. So it has no specific location for you? It has no location at all? Or it, it does in the... But it does in the physical It does in the appearance. body, and it even does in the energy bodies. It has a location, so to speak. But the real heart is God. There's only one heart. There's only, it's the heart of hearts, right? So ultimately these hearts that are have a location, they function like gateways or portals or windows into the allness, the oneness of all things. Unity consciousness. So it is about awakening of mm. the heart. 
Yes, it is very for much. Yes, especially being. for humanity at this time. Yeah. yeah, that would be a really great yeah. shift if we could yes. get to that state. Shift from mind to heart, shift from certainty to uncertainty. Yeah. Make it exciting, make an, ex make an exciting life out of uncertainty. Yeah. Like you said, courage. Less linear thinking, less thinking, really. <laughs> more being, more just being in the bliss and the happiness of who you are, what you are, less clouding it up with mind and concepts and ideas. If we just learn to just be and stop thinking for little moments at a time every day, just like little breaks in the clouds mm -hmm. for the sun to shine through, you know, it feels so delicious when you stop thinking for two seconds and you just notice that you exist. It's just like, oh, wow. oh I'm here. Yeah. I exist, whether I think or not. That's such a profound state. That's an opening of the heart right there. So I often suggest people take two to five seconds of absolutely no thought, recognizing the space of consciousness which remains, the state of being that remains, the isness that remains, so that we become more familiar with what's beneath the clouds, you know, or beyond the clouds. And it's, it's sunshine. It sounds silly, but it's like open sky. It's like vastness, it's space, it's presence, it's clarity, it's lucidity, it's empowerment, it's freedom, it's well-being, it's love, it's all the, these qualities that we seek from the outside world start to emanate into our lives when we pause our thinking, our concept, for two to five seconds at a time and just learn to be. And just do that at least 12 times a day, sincerely, with sincere intention at least 12 times a day for three months and see what happens. Wonderful. Even just that, yeah. natural intelligence will come through, natural insights and visions and creativity. Yeah. You know, so it could be a wonderful beginning for all of us watching yes. Yes. to start to do this exercise. It's a really tangible tool also for yeah. people who are coming from a different view, perspective. Absolutely. Or whatever. Two to five Wonderful. seconds, many times during the day. We can do that. Right. <laughs> Is there anything else you would like to elaborate on, having mm. this moment? To well, I would, say, I would say to those that do not consider themselves leaders yet, to really find the quality within that you believe could make a difference. It's about making a difference. It's about being happy through making a difference in people's lives, mm. in the world. So there's probably, well, there is a lot of people, I don't know about your audience, but there's a lot of people that out of their insecurity, do not consider themselves leaders. And so they look to other leaders, but there is a leader in every being. A leader of one's own heart, one's own calling needs to be led. We need to take responsibility and ownership and, and become more confident in the fact that our calling is important in making a difference in the world. So those that are watching, I just would like to say that they should really sense deep within themselves where they have something unique, a unique truth to offer humanity at this timing and create a life that allows us to bring that forth. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes. Ben Signor, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. It's been a real pleasure and mm -hmm. it's a blessing, I think, for everyone mm -hmm. that you're doing what you're doing and sharing it with, mm -hmm. with all of us. So thank you for your time.